We research blood transfusion reactions, which is what happens when a blood transfusion goes wrong and how the immune system responds. There are two types of transfusion reactions. The first type is called a hemolytic transfusion reaction, and the other type is a febrile non-hemolytic transfusion reaction. The hemolytic transfusion reaction is the most common type of reaction. Hemolytic transfusion reactions involve the destruction of incompatible red blood cells. Hemolytic transfusion reactions can occur immediately, which is known as an acute reaction, or they can occur after a few days, which is known as a delayed reaction. The less common febrile non-hemolytic reaction is caused by the destruction of white blood cells or the destruction of plasma. Symptoms of both reactions include back pain, bloody urine, chills, fainting or dizziness, fever, and skin flushing. Prognosis varies for each patient and depends on each situation. Issues may disappear or they may be severe and life-threatening. So why do the reactions occur in the first place? Reactions to transfusions are most often a result of incompatible blood type being used. When this happens, the immune system views the incompatible blood cells as invaders and attacks them accordingly. This type of immune response is temporary. In addition to an immune reaction, allergic reactions may be induced by blood transfusions. Allergic reactions are treated with antihistamines while Fever and pain due to a hemolytic response can be treated with acetaminophen. Your doctor can also administer medicine and fluid through an IV to reduce the chance of kidney failure and shock. When the incompatible red blood cells enter your body, your immune response will recognize them as an antigen. After this, cells called macrophages will ingest the red blood cells. engulfing the red blood cell, the macrophage will present fragments of the cell along with MHC2 on its surface. Helper T cells then bind to this. The macrophage secretes cytokines, stimulating growth and production of more T cells. The T cells then will activate B cells, which will either become memory B cells or plasma cells. Let's review that process one more time. The macrophage presents fragments of the antigen with MHC2. Then, the T cells bind to this. After this, the macrophage secretes cytokines, which stimulate the production of T cells. Next, activated T cells leave to activate B cells. Here, the B cells are stimulated. Once the B cells are stimulated, they either become memory cells or become plasma cells. This is when the immune response really kicks in. IgM antibodies are produced, which then switches to IgE antibody production. The body responds to the transfusion by producing a humoral response. This means that the antibodies in the patient cover the transfused red blood cells. This produces a chain reaction involving enzymes that ends with holes being punched in the cell membrane. This response can lead to additional complications including acute kidney failure, anemia, lung problems, and shock. Despite all of this, there are still ways to prevent a transfusion reaction. First off, only get transfusions when absolutely necessary. In addition to this, when possible, use only blood components, not whole blood.